Good morning. We are going to be reading The Art of Miss Chu by Patricia Polacco. I discovered how much I love art the summer I spent with my grandmother and father in Michigan. Grandma was an artist. She drew and painted so beautifully. Grandma even told me that I was a natural artist, so I couldn't wait to take art at school next fall when I got home to California. I only had one problem left, tests. I just couldn't seem to pass them. I was back in California and I loved school. Hard to believe, but once I had a lot of trouble reading, but not anymore. And I really like my new teacher, Mr. Donovan. He was from Ireland and he had sky blue eyes and a laugh that sounded like bells singing and a great Irish accent. He loved telling stories about his family back home, especially about his father. Seemed like he always had a smile on his face. But he didn't have a smile the day he handed me back my first social studies test. I could feel my face get real hot when I unfolded it, an F again. The trouble was everyone read faster than me. Even though I knew the subject real well, I'd run out of time before I was finished. I started having stomach aches when I knew a weekly test was coming up. Mr. Donovan finally sat me down. You know the subject, Trisha. What you need is extra time. He started giving me the time I needed and sure enough, I began passing the test. But that didn't help my other problem. There was no real art class in my new school. Just art on a cart for 30 minutes once a week. Then one day, Mr. Donovan saw one of my drawings. He picked it up and hung it on the bulletin board. Patricia, you have remarkable talent. All of the kids in class crowded up to look at the picture. Man, oh man, can you draw? Davy Mulfer remarked, wow, Rick Scrub agreed. Even Neone Price, who never spoke to me because she was so popular, was impressed. I felt so proud. It wasn't a day later when Mr. Donovan told me about Mrs. Chu, head of the high school art department. She had a special program for young art artists on Tuesdays and Thursdays. When I showed her your drawing, she said she wanted you in her special class. Now, what would you be thinking of that, Miss Trish? I love drawing. Sometimes when I was drawing, I'd forget to breathe. I danced on air all the way home that day. I couldn't wait to tell my mother. That first Tuesday, I'd walked so fast. I'd never walked so fast in my life as I did to get into Mrs. Chu's class on time. I'd never seen a room like hers. Windows that went from ceiling to floor, giant easels at one end, rows of drying racks at the other, and paint everywhere. I didn't know anybody. Then Mrs. Chu breezed into the room. Her smock was covered in paint, and it was almost like a painting in itself. She was tall and slender, and she spoke with a Chinese accent. We have a new student today, she said, motioning toward me with her beautiful long fingers. Her name is Ter Teresa Barber. Teresa? Um, no, I wanted to shout out, my name is Patricia, but Miss Chu had already spun around and was passing out sketchbooks from the, from that day on, I was Teresa. I could barely understand Miss Chu's accent. In this class, we are going to learn to speak another language. She touched her heart. The language of art. Art? A language? But Miss Chu went on. It isn't even spoken. It's the language of emotion and images. But first, she told us, you need to learn to see. See! She plopped down two salt shakers in the middle of the table. Open your sketchbooks. Take up your pencils. Now draw the shakers. But first, young friends, see them. Don't just look at them. See them. <coughs> See how the light dances through the glasses and makes a shadow pattern on the table. Yes, I saw it. Draw it, said Miss Chu. See how you can make your pencil line darker and lighter. <coughs> she changed the line from dark to light. Yes, I saw, I saw that too. Yes, Teresa, Miss Chu said. You have it. Now, do your drawings again. Move the shakers 
off center. Let them run off the page on purpose. Make them bigger. Get the dancing light as it makes its shadow, she sang as she moved from table to table. She made us draw those shakers six times in six different ways. At the end of the day, she said, take your sketchbooks everywhere with you. First see, then draw. I couldn't wait. I took my sketchbook everywhere with me. On the bus home, I drew people sitting in their seats, even the bus driver. When I got home, I drew apples in a bowl and my cat Tilly. After dinner, I made my mom and my brother Richie sit so I could draw them. Ain't you got no homework, my brother groaned. This is homework, I said. Sit a little longer. I almost have you. The next day, after I'd finished my assignment, I asked Mr. Donovan if I could make a drawing of his da, his father, from his photo on his desk. I tried to remember everything Mrs. Miss Chu told me. The next art class, Miss Chu called me up to her desk. Everyone else handed in one or two sketches. I had done over 20. Your drawings are very good. Her eyes smiled as if we had a secret. The cat, the apples, your mother and brother, you captured every detail. I particularly like your use of negative space. Negative space? See this drawing, Teresa? What do you see? She held up a picture. Uh, two people looking at each other? Uh, anybody could see that. Now, Teresa, instead of looking at the two faces, look at what's between them. Uh, nothing. Wait, uh, a tall stemmed cup. First, you read negative space. Now, you are reading the actual object. What an idea. I started looking at all of my pictures for negative space. I was so happy, but a few weeks later, Mr. Donovan was called to the office. When he came back, his eyes were red. He couldn't seem to talk. He just stared out the window. Finally, he spoke. Me da died today, he whispered. Our whole class got out of our seats and tried to comfort him. He left for Ireland the next day. That is when we got Mrs. Spaulding, a substitute who never smiled. Worst of all, when I was taking my weekly test, she came up behind me and ripped the paper right out from under my pencil. Time's up, she barked. But Miss Spaulding, I I'm not finished. Mr. Donovan always lets me have extra time because I'm not Mr. Donovan. And when I say you're finished, you're finished. Of course I failed the test. That's when she got just plain mean. Your time would be better spent studying for your test instead of leaving this school to take art classes, she hissed. And I'm going to see if I can make that happen. I tried to be brave and not tell Mrs. Chu, but in class I began to cry and blurted out the threat that Mrs. Spaulding had made. Mrs. Chu began to shake her head slowly. Teresa, she said, you... You say you can't read fast enough to finish your test. I nodded. I watch you draw, and you begin drawing by drawing what is negative space. I remember the picture of the two girls facing the glass. When you see a word, I think you don't see the letters at first. I think you first see the space around them, the patterns that they make. No wonder your reading takes so much time, as Chu said. I smiled, but I still wasn't quite sure what she meant. I know someone I think I can help, a reading specialist. No one is taking you from this class. I sprang to my feet and hugged her. And tomorrow, Teresa, I am assigning you an easel. You are not only ready for painting, maybe you can be a part of the high school spring art show. The following day, Mrs. Spaulding announced we would take a timed citywide test that would determine what classes we would take next year. We had 45 minutes to finish. I only finished half the test. I knew my art, art class was over, but when I told Mrs. Chu, she said, we'll just see about that. With my mom's permission, she would take me herself to see her friend, the reading specialist. After class, Mrs. Chu took me to her car, a convertible. As we drove off, the car sounded like it was growling, and I loved it when we drove by my school and Mrs. Spaulding actually saw us. Dr. Mick Claire played what seemed like a hundred reading games with me, but I wasn't afraid. I knew he was trying to help. When he finally called Mrs. Chu in, he said, you were spot on, Mrs. Chu. She reads patterns, not words. This takes time. Mrs. Chu wanted a meeting of all the players. Everyone came. The principal, Miss Spaulding, Miss Chu, Dr. McClare, and my mother. 
Mrs. Spaulding said that the extra art class was simply a distraction. Trisha is drawing instead of studying, Mrs. Chu said, but Mrs. Chu said, but she needs extra time to finish tests, all tests. When she and Dr. McClear said that I see things differently than most students, Mrs. Spaulding scoffed as if to say, what could an art teacher know about how a child learns? I don't tell you how to teach a child to draw. It was as if she didn't think art teachers were real teachers, that maybe art wasn't even a real class. Mr. Donovan came back exactly two days later. I couldn't help myself. I ran to him and hugged him. I'm so glad you're back, I said. When someone else told him what Mrs. Spaulding was trying to do, he got really red in the face. And I don't know exactly what happened after that day, but it seemed that Mrs. Spaulding was no longer needed as a substitute. Not in the whole school. So I went on to Miss Chu's class every Tuesday and Thursday. Of course, as soon as Mr. Donovan gave me extra time, when I took my test, I passed them with flying colors. I decided to use the sketch of Miss Donovan's father for my first painting. When Miss Chu saw it, she just stood there and looked at it. Teresa, this sketch is so full of emotion and love. You have most certainly learned the language of art. Mr. Donovan will be so moved. When I finished the painting, she said, Teresa, this, this painting is going to be part of the art show. You will not only be exhibiting, you will be the only exhibiting artist who isn't a high school student. I couldn't believe it. Me, me in the spring art show. Later that day, Miss Chu asked me to stay after class. She handed me a package wrapped in bright red tissue paper and said softly, we Chinese believe that red brings luck. And Teresa, remember this ancient, ancient Chinese proverb, yesterday is history, tomorrow a mystery, today a gift. That is why it is called the present, she smiled. When I opened the gift, I caught my breath. It was one of Mrs. Chu's painting smocks. For me, I wanted to cry. When I looked her in the eyes, she had tears too. Only a week later, I wore my new smock to the art show. Light was dancing off of the mirror chandeliers. Our paintings were everywhere. I was so proud. Then I saw Mr. Donovan standing in front of my painting of his father. He couldn't speak. He took my hand and squeezed it. Mrs. Chu came up to us. She looked so radiant. It's beautiful, isn't it? She whispered to him. I looked at the two of them. Mrs. Chu was right. This moment was a present. It turned out to be the defining moment in my young life. I was set on a course to be an artist, and it could be no other way. Thanks to the art of the amazing Mrs. Chu. And I wanted to read this back part from the author. It says, Dear Reader, if I could have, I would have addressed this letter to Miss Chu. But since she is no longer here, I want you to understand the deep and abiding feelings I will always hold for her. Violet Chu not only taught me how to see, but how to perceive, evaluate, and appreciate the beauty of art. The tragedy is that today, too often, monies are no longer available in public school to support art, music, drama, or descriptive art programs. How could this be? Art teaches us to speak a language that originates in the heart, the soul, and the earliest memories. How could any course be more important? Mrs. Chu went on to become my art teacher at Oakland Technical High School during the 1960s. It is solely because of her that I managed to earn a scholarship to California College of Arts. And in all the years that Miss Chu was in my life, she never called me by my given name. I am and always shall be her Teresa. So Miss Chu, I am thanking you for your remarkable art, your ever-failing heart, and your belief in young people. Sincerely, Patricia Polacco.